Okay, this morning we're working a variatus type flatty, and we don't give this fish scientific name, Zephophorus variatus. It looks sort of like, has the shape of variatus, but it's obviously a hybrid. Almost all the commercial Moculatus and, and variatus flatties are hybrids. You have to join something like American Library Association to get wild, uh, pure species. What I did with this fish a few cycles ago, uh, three or four breeding cycles ago, I wanted a uh, marigold variatus. And I had marigold moculatus. So what I did was take some sunset variatus, cross them to the mar marigold vari moculatus, and then started selecting for variatus type shape. And I'm gonna show you, this is a sample of what we were getting in this cycle. I'll show you some of the breeders and what we look for. Of course, we look for a nice marigold. This is a more of a, this is a sunset female. Sunsets carry marigold as a recessive, but they have this dominant color that dulls out the marigold. I'm keeping her as a breeder because we don't have a lot of breeders. Let me step by you, Susie. I need to get some water. I'm sorry. Okay, she's a nice fish. She looks more variatus than moculatus. And if you're not quite sure what I mean by that, you'll need to look up the fish online. More of an elongated shape. Okay, so she's going to go in the breeding colony. She's mated to marigold males, high fin males. And oh, I guess I should have shown you, she is a high fin. Okay, this is a fairly decent high fin marigold. She's got a little bit kind of moculata shape, but she'll be mated to some really good varigos type males. And so she's going to throw some, some good offspring. This is another one that's fairly decent. Still a little bit too moculatus looking for my taste, but we need fish right now. Okay, this is a non-high fin marigold. We won't use him as a breeder. I just wanted to show you he has an aerial colored pattern. He has variatus shape. This is a, this fish has a little too much iridescence, but I'm going to use him anyway. He's a high fin. I'm putting four high fin males. This one also has a little bit too much uh, iridescence, but we'll breed that out later. Oops, I dropped him on the ground. Okay, and another high fin male. I'm only putting high fin males in only putting high pin females in. That's a nice little male. He's got good color. Better color than the other males I'm putting in there, but uh, they've got good shape. I don't want that short fin male in the breeding colony. That is a non-high pin female. She won't go in the breeding colony, but she's a marigold. She's a little bit too moculatus for my taste, but she'll work. And this male will go in. Okay, so I've already put up female high fins. Pick up Kate over there. Kate's sorting the last of the high fin females out for me to take a look at. I did use some non-high fin females with the high fin males because they look like good variatus. Uh, and they'll throw 50% high fin. High fins and the typical high fin, and sometimes I talk about what I call a true breeding high fin, which is different. Typically, high fin in the zephoporines, the sword tails and flatties, is a homozygous lethal, and it's a dominant characteristic. So any high fin fish is carrying the recessive short fin, non-high fin. So when you mate two high fins together, because any embryo that inherits uh, high fin from both the mother and father dies as an embryo, the, the typical ratio of high fin to non-high fin is two to one. You can't get true breeding one. So if, but if you start with all high fin breeders, you get about two thirds high fins. So you can go with just high fin males and non-high fin females and you'll get 50%. One of these days I'll do a whiteboard on that one, but no, we're not going to do it on this video because we're getting ready to do a bunch of other variatus with high fin. I'll have a lot of opportunity to do that. Okay, good fish keeping.